Hey everyone! Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Um, hi! Uh, will you please let me know if you can hear me at all? Um, if you can just say hi. Um, it's been so, so long. Um, I'm actually, I think, not as nervous as the very first time I did this, but like I think probably just around the same amount of nervous uh i guess i first if this oh my god hey andrew oh gosh um so i'm doing this uh from my new office Ooh, hi program 247365 um dog, dog. thank you so much for joining I'm, I'm excited to be doing this again i think i actually started this around the same time last year and then i took a really 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 long break from like I guess from February on till now, originally, um, yeah, hey Andrew, um, so I'm renting this office space right now, it's a really cute, uh, like a creative sort of office space, um, and uh, because like uh, the place I'm currently staying at is like temporary, well now kind of permanently temporary, <laughs> um, until we can try and find a more permanent place, so um the space though is like nice and um furnished and for for all of my all of my work needs so i'll be in here for the time being um but yes uh i wow there's a lot of odds this time around okay so i've been gone since february because i went to tokyo for three months and that was an amazing experience and i kind of what to do it again I it just it was just so fun because like I was renting a little bit of a like I was in a co-working space with like a bunch of creative developers and producers and um, it was super inspiring to kind of like look and see what they are working on and that was kind of the primary reasons why I went to Tokyo because I felt like they were doing such cool things with art and tech over there and I just wanted to be surrounded by that and I thought maybe three months would be enough I don't think three months was enough um I think I barely scratched the surface of the cool things that are going on over there so I really really do want to go back um but I was in this really cool co-working space in Sibuya and I was renting um a little space um uh, like maybe 20 minutes outside of Sibuya and I would train in every morning and train back every night and then um, the food was delicious it was good and I was there for cherry blossom season uh but um originally I was hoping to uh stream from the co-working space that I found but unfortunately it was kind of like a very like open space and then maybe I was like maybe um maybe I'd be able to do it during the weekends but then like to you know, rent one of their meeting spaces, it was like $10 per hour, which, I don't know, I was like, I'm not sure if I want to be, like, rent, like paying, like, the amount it was to rent the co-working space per month, and, like, I guess that would come out to be, like, $80 per month, so I was like, hmm, maybe I'll do it soon, and then, also, I was working pretty hard, and I was like, okay, but on the weekends, I do want to go out and explore Tokyo, so it didn't happen then, and I got back, um, and there was been, I've been traveling a little bit for conferences, and then, uh, <laughs> Andrew says, God, stop making me want to go back to Japan, I, yeah, uh, I were recommend it, um, it's really fun, it's really beautiful, and the food is really great. And then I've been back and I've been doing conferences a little bit. And then I just got back last night from Minneapolis where I was shooting a workshop for front end masters. And so I have two new workshops, two, sorry, two new courses coming out on front end masters, hopefully in a month from now or something, which means I am pretty sleepy right now. I'm pretty exhausted right now. And because <laughs> uh, for I think the last three or four weeks, like I've been working on clients during the week, and, I mean, sorry, during the day, and then I've been working on like workshops during the night. And the last two weeks, I was like working on um, workshops the whole time uh, when I didn't have to work on client. So, so now I'm just like, yes, I'm done. Um, and then I just have two more talks this month, and then, but, but I, uh, I think I don't have to travel on the weekends for 
um, the next two months or so. So I wanted to bring, I wanted to um, bring the Twitch back because um, I wanted to make sure there was like an uninterrupted period that I can resume the Twitch live streams and um, because also I haven't ever finished the Taylor Swift visualization. Um, which I was working on before I left for Japan. So, um, but before I get into that, how have you been doing? It's been so long. I don't know. I, I just see Andrew in the chat. Um, I don't know if there's anybody, like, is there a lot of new people? Or um, if there's anybody that used to join my stream from before I went to Japan, I would love to say hi and I want to say thank you and hi for joining to the new people also there seemed to have been like this huge influx of people on I guess programming Twitch while I was in Japan and like I don't know I don't know I wasn't putting out that much content or anything but uh, I somehow got followers so thank you so much um, and yeah so Andrew asked if I'm renting a place in SF so this is an office space that I am indeed renting in SF in an undisclosed location. <laughs> um, but it's a really cute, uh, there's a few of us in here that are all creatives. Um, okay, so um, today what I want to do is resurrect my Taylor Swift project. So I've been working on a bunch of other projects. Um, yeah, um, Andrew says, I love that coding Twitch is becoming so much more a thing. Um, me too. Uh, so I heard that like for, Last year at TwitchCon, there was like a meetup of just the programming Twitch live streamers. Um, and I hear maybe there's one this year too, uh, down in, I guess, San Jose. And if there is, I'd love to kind of just join that meetup. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. It is money. Um, the office space in SF. Uh, but I realize it's a lot better for my productivity than... Um, than <laughs> working from home where I was right by my bed and then and whenever something got a little bit even remotely hard like even like if my designs or code took like even a little bit too much brain power I was like ah oh, I'm done I would like flop into bed and not come back out for like two hours and I was like this is the least <laughs> least productive thing um and I've been here for the past month or so I think um and it's been going really well. I feel like I'm being really productive. And today, uh, I'm I'm kind of tired. So I went to go to Boba Guys nearby, but I went and got Boba Guys to keep myself awake, hopefully. But I feel like I can even just talk here for a bit. Um, but today I want to uh, get back into Taylor Swift data visualization, um, which was what I was doing before I left. Um, and this is, I think, uh, what I got to, um, and it was basically looking at all the colors in her music videos, um, and I really liked this idea, but then after a while, I got really tired of it, and I think it's because, I think the first reason is because I don't have that much experience with color, so I don't exactly know what kind of story I want to tell with it, and I... And the other thing is that I have to admit to myself that after a while I was doing this more because I wanted the technical, like I was like, I can do this and I can code this. And um, I think I was like so concentrating, I'm just so concentrated on doing something that was like technically impressive or something like that, that um, I kind of lost the direction of like, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to, for data visual like for visual storytelling at the end of the day i'm trying to tell a story at the end of the day it's just like um finding something that's interesting or a series of some things that are interesting and then um writing something around that and then the visualizations are only just support supposed to like support that story but like here i was like trying to do all these different things with the visualizations and um so i took a step back um and oh i just realized you can't see oh there we go um, and I took a step back and I worked on a few different things. Um, some of them are for clients. I guess, I guess none that have come publicly come out yet, but I'm going to come back and work on this again. Um, and I'm excited to work on this. Uh, but 
I, I want to kind of step back and instead of concentrating so much on color, what I'm going to try and do today, my goals for the live stream today is to go and find uh, just all of her lyrics um, and then I want to put that through. So I learned about this, um, it's a... I guess it's like sentiment analysis, but it, it's got a specific name that I wrote down the name. Uh, I wrote down in my notes that I learned about from um, IO Festival, which is this kind of like creative code festival over in Minneapolis and um, around June time. And um, there was, I think, Hannah Davis, uh, who's a programmer from, I want to say, New York, who went and took novels um, just classic novels and um, mapped each of the sentences, I think, to some sort of an emotion, like anger or sadness or um, happiness. And, and she used some library for that. And then, and then taking those emotions, she created music out of it. So that was really cool to uh, learn about and like hear that talk. But the thing that stood out to me was uh, the the library that she was using. And I kind of wanted to use that um, because when I took a step back and thought a lot about Taylor Swift, let me try and find the name of that library. Um, what I realized was that like the thing that really made me like her songs um, as a late teenager and early like in college was just about kind of her everyday, like day-to-day, -day, like relationships and how she was feeling. And I think a lot of people kind of relate to the emotions that she puts in her songs. So um, I realized instead of trying to do something fancy with color um, that I don't even really know what I want to do, let me go back to what I do understand, which is like literary analysis. And maybe if I can pull the colors back in, because I think the data set is really cool, um, then then maybe I can do, then maybe I can pull the color in them, but then let me focus on the emotions and her storytelling. And so let me see. Oh no. I don't know where I jot it down. Oh, there we go. Um, word emotion association lexicon is apparently what it's called. So let me Google for that. But yeah, so today's goal for this stream is to just get all of her uh, lyrics, pass it through this word emotion association lexicon. I think she said it was in Python. I'm gonna see if there's a JavaScript version. And then, interesting. And then what I'm gonna, ooh. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I've been using this thing called Observable Notebook for the last few weeks to do my data exploration. So I'm going to kind of um, go through her lyrics, assign emotion to each of the, I guess, each of the lines, and then I'm going to port it into Observable Notebook and see um, if I can explore it and see if there's something interesting that comes out of her uh, songs. So that is my goal for today. Um, and I realized perhaps I should have done this part before the live stream, but maybe, maybe, maybe hopefully it's interesting for everyone to see, I don't know how I find these libraries. Actually, before I go and find the Word emotion association lexicon, which I'm pretty sure I probably wrote that down wrong because she said it really fast and then I probably didn't quite note it down correctly. But before I do that, let me go and find uh, a GitHub repo with her lyrics or something. Because somewhere, somewhere out there, I am 100% sure someone has put all of her lyrics. All oh, T Swift lyrics. So this Irene person, thank you so much. Analyze Taylor Swift lyrics using Python. There we go. And narrative songs. Someone 
one has done this. Here we will analyze what makes a T-Swiss song sound like her songwriting. Interesting. So, okay, so somewhere she says her full song data is an azlyrics.json. I hope, I hope I'm allowed to use this. So she scraped it from azlyrics, all Taylor Swift lyrics.txt. Ah, wait, this is. She said azlyrics.json. Ooh, okay. And this is how I go and find my data. JSON formatter, let's take a look at how this data looks. Andrew says, this reminds me of a thing I wrote in high school about the emotional impact of first, second, third person and past, present, future tense in literature. Huh, that's interesting. Shachi um, asks, what are you trying to visualize? Um, I don't know yet. I'm just trying to, I think it's going to be something around the lyrics in Taylor Swift music. Uh, so this one, okay, so this is every single one of her songs. Um, and then she has the lyrics and there is a new line for each of the line. So I think this I can take. Let me try and see if there's any others. It seems to be mostly this person. This Irene trampoline person. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Captain Jamie, for following. Okay. So now I have her lyrics. So let me go and save that. And then what I want to do is because her lyrics are um, just one big string per song um, separated by new lines, I want to go and separate that out. I want to cut it by each new line some, and later, but let me go and read through some of these uh, emotion libraries. So, okay, install emotion. Oh, movie, thank you so much for following. Um, oh, thank you so much. So, I'm so tired right now. I'm sorry if I don't make sense during this Twitch stream. But I just really, 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 really wanted to get back into it. So I'm like pushing myself. I'm like, you can do it, Shirley. Um, thank you so much, Captain Jamie, uh, who said, I loved your course on front and masters. It was a big help when I was building a D3 project at work. Um, I'm so glad about that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about the intro D3 one. Um, and I just recorded two for them that was like um, how to get into DataViz from a React perspective as well as how to build custom data visualizations and I'm really hoping people kind of like I'm hoping um, uh, that it helps more front-end devs get into data visualization and especially like building custom data visualization that's my hope I'm very excited so let's see um, Surreal various assessments. Surreal various such. Oh, wait, no. Um, I don't think this is what I'm looking for. So whichever one she said um, gave her back like happiness or. Um, so maybe it is that I have to do Python. I like prefer to use. JavaScript because I have, I don't I basically don't use any other libraries now. Um, I am not proud of this, but uh, oh, 
We got that. Okay, so 25,000 senses. What is this? NRC, Word Emotion Association Lexicon. Maybe this is the one she was talking about. Interactive visual homepage of the lexicon. Um, sentiments, negative or positive. Emotions, anger, anticipation, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, surprise, trust. Um, association scores not associated weakly, moderately, or strongly associated. Interesting. Like crowdsourcing. Hmm. Okay, there's a lot of them. Hashtag emotion lexicon. Um, I think maybe this is the one she was talking about. NRC Emotion Association. Huh. It's for the NRC Word Emotion Association lexicon. Okay. Effect categories, sets of categories. Wow. Trust sentence. Okay. She ended up showing the number of words associated with sets of categories. So, oh, I wonder if I'm allowed to do. This freely for research purposes. Okay, non-commercial research use. Um, I guess this is the. I think this is the one I want. Um, Abacus Trust, interesting. A board. I don't quite know how to use this yet. Um. Oh, Captain Jeremy says, yeah, I saw them put them on my to watch list. Thank you so much for putting them on your to watch list. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't, okay, um, text analysis, NRC, maybe I can do NRC emotion lexicon and then make it, make it JavaScript, ooh, okay, so there's that. Emotion, how do I use this? So there's ooh, NRC sentiment. This one will give me back. I think this one will only give me, yeah, positive and negative. I don't think it will give me any emotions. No. Yeah, it will only give me back positive or negative. And this one. Yeah, it will only give me positive and negative. It seems. Hmm. So maybe it is that I have to do it. How to improve Twitter? Hmm. I guess it is that I have to uh, use Python. <laughs> I haven't used Python in like months or maybe years. B food text analysis, um, emotional emotion recognition. Let's see, NRC emotion lexicon. Okay. Mm. Is this anger or fear? Huh. Implement NLP emotion recognition with the NRC emotion lexicon. If you have the text file, you should be able to initialize a dictionary to tag words or a sequence of words. 
There is no Python library that encapsulates this lexicon primarily because its application varies. Hmm. I thought I was able to find this. I thought I looked for it two months ago and I was able to find it. Hmm. CRTs. Let me try and see if he goes Hannah and Davis. Okay, so this is the the conference that I was at um, called IO Fest, and the talk that I saw was Hannah. Hannah Davis, uh, and then the, I think, project that she was talking about is, yeah, this one, Music from Text, first iteration of program that finds different emotions throughout text and programmatically creates music with a similar emotional tone, which is really, really cool. Natural language processing, transpose, reads in text, and determines densities of eight different emotions and two different states throughout the novel. The music piece chronologically follows the novel, um, uses emotion density data to determine use of the NRC word emotion association lexicon created by um, okay. So it is this one, and I guess I just need to read a lot deeper into how to use this. There's the README. And then I also just remembered she had announced something during that talk called ML5. .js, which is friendly machine learning for the web, which I think sounds really, really cool. Oh my gosh! Hey Matt! Um, Matt from Polygraph, or Pudding now, um, I talked about Pudding a lot during my uh, building custom data viz workshop. I was like, if you want to get into visual storytelling, please check out Pudding because they have really cool stuff um, that are really great for inspiration. So. Matt says, I'm actually using the NRC Emotion Lexicon right now. Okay, so maybe you can help me figure this out. I was basically like, I'm going to get on Twitch and then figure this out because how hard can it be? Um, yeah, uh, I am not a smart person. So, um, but she also mentioned this one, which I think is by the processing organization or the people behind P5JS. Um, and so this is supposed to make machine learning a lot easier. But I don't think this is what I want. Um, so let's see how to use this. Format. Hmm. Details. So is this where I go for it? Sourcing a word emotion association lexicon with annotations for English words. Okay. Okay, um, is it I just, is it just I just download this? Or direct download and can be used freely for research purposes. Okay, next to the lexicons, 
like detail for the creation and use. You can use a left saw in the product or application, then please credit the authors. Um, so I guess um, you're interested in collaborative research project. So I guess it is that, yes, I download that. And then I'm not quite sure, non-commercial research use, there we go. I don't know how I'm supposed to be using this. <laughs> um, so here's the non-commercial research use, technical and research related questions. Okay, in terms of use, manually created lexicons. Association of words. Okay, in 25,000 word senses. And click to download manually created lexicons. Okay, let's download this and see what happens. You use in a multitude of contexts such as sentiment analysis, product marketing, consumer behavior, list of words that help identify emotions, um, as well as analyzing hashtags, emotion, emoticons, and word color associations. The lexicon contains entries for English words and can be used to analyze English text. Just in the in okay, each of the lexicons is available in a subfolder corresponding to its name. Let's try this. Okay. Okay, I'll have to read through this later. And honestly, so this is automatically generated. And then the one that I want is the emotion one. So and I see effect intensity, emotion lexicon, there we go. And I see emotion lexicon. And then, ooh, okay, lexicon in one of five languages. Wow. And this is plain text. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, okay. So this one is the one in, okay, these two are in, wait, and then this is word level. Paper, I should probably also read the papers. It's like, I would just jump in and hopefully there's a new package that takes care of this. Nope. Cross-sourcing, okay, this is the one about cross-sourcing, and then this is. Emotions evoked by common words and phrases using mechanical turf to create an emotion lexicon. That's cool. So I will read into this hopefully later on. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Let's take a look at this file. Not quite sure how I'm supposed to be reading this. Okay, so uniform, okay, clothing, outfit, items. Okay, so is it that? Okay, so I think my understanding. Oh, um, Matt says. I'm not sure what you're trying to do, but this uses this lexicon. What, what uses this lexicon? So what I'm trying to do is what I thought was going to be pretty basic, but um, I'm just trying to map Taylor Swift lyrics um, line by line to an emotion, <laughs> and that's all I'm trying to do. Um, and so I have heard of, ooh, 
Let me open this up. All joy, increase my and grow. Fitter, happier. Is it a suit? Oh, this is using R. And this is A K E. This is actually quite similar to what I'm trying to do. Um, so I'm basically just trying to get emotions for each line in Taylor Swift's songs. Quantifying sentiment. Valence and moon calculating the status song is pretty straightforward. Interesting. Ah, uh, is this where I go and learn R? Miracle density. Data driven depression. <laughs> And um, and fill my void asks if is if this is effectiva? No, it's not. I'm actually not quite sure what's effectiva. Um, with a a one you says educated guess if um if the row ends in one, I think it means the first word on the line has the emotion listed last. Um, I actually think it might be that this is the word, and I think maybe it's that these are the synonyms for them, because if you look at conceit, and then it has dash dash, and it says vanity, assurance, errors, and then it has, after another, I guess that's a tab, then it has the emotion, and then it has whether it's a zero or one. Yeah, so I think it might be these are all these are all the words and then this is the emotions. So that's my guess. Uh, Matt says yes, and an NRC lexicon for a radio head lyrics. I guess I need to actually read into what NRC lexicon means because I don't even know what that means. And um, fill my voice says, can you link this page? By link this page, do you mean the um? I think is it this one? Oh, there we go. Thank you so much, Matt. And we want this file. Oh, I think. Oh, cool. Um, except that link is not going anywhere for me. Um, our Charlie one. It's much simpler. Yeah. So the one that you linked for me, it seems like it's yours is NRC Emotion Lexicon Word Level. So maybe I actually already have that and maybe it's in here. No, okay, so, oh, it's this one. Okay, so Emotion, Location, Word Level. Oh, nice. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, yeah, found it. Thank you, Matt. Um, so this is the one I want. Okay, now um, I just need to figure out a way to translate her lyrics to this. And I think maybe what I can do is something really, really simple where I just loop through each show of her words in a line and then um, and then every time there's a one by any of these uh, 
emotions, I just add a one <laughs> to that emotion for that line. I think it's going to be really, really, um, probably really simple, which I am a fan of. So, uh, but my void says, oh, I see this is lyrical analysis. And it's a bag of words, sentiment analysis. Yes, um, actually, I'm excited. So uh, when I, whenever I do sentiment analysis, I just like go and get like a package um, that does it for me. So I'm kind of like I'm kind of happy to do this. Um, and then yeah, I'm just gonna do something really really simple where I just um, go through each word and then I note down um, any anger or. or anticipation or discuss or any of these um, for any of the words in the line. So I think what I need to do is let's, first of all, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go through each of these um, and turn this into just like a simple JSON of like key value pairs of, um, yeah, so keyed by each of these words and um, and then in the values, I'll have whether, uh, and I'll only remember the um, the emotions that have um, a one, and then I can go through line by line of her lyrics, um, and and then yeah, and then and then yes, I have a plan. I don't think I'm articulating it, but uh, I have a plan, so I'm excited. Um, and so my voice said. Yes, it's a bag of words sentiment analysis. I thought you were doing um, facial recognition of the music video and graphing the emotions when the face disappeared. That is also another idea that I have actually done before. Um, <laughs> but my voice says, this looks so fun. Yes, I'm glad. Thanks for like sitting through whatever that 30 minutes or something was of me being like, what's a lexicon? What does NRC mean? I mean, I also still don't know what NRC means, but I'm like, how do I do this? I thought it was just as simple as Google. <laughs> um, but no, I actually have done something uh, that you, so for this one, I basically um, went through a bunch of uh, interviews of the Obamas and I um, screenshotted their interviews and uploaded them to Google like Vision API and then depending on the amount, like the the emotion, which I don't think is like that accurate, but like depending on how like how, like I'll, I'll run through them, and then and the Vision API would basically be like, oh, here's a face, and this is how happy that face looks, um, and it would give me back that information, and then I instead of doing anything useful with that data, I just put emojis on their faces. So I have done that before, <laughs> um, but this time it's uh, it is just gonna be lyrical analysis. And I'm excited for this. Uh, I also just realized, um, actually, they, they even have, that's cool, because like, I was worried about, um, what's it called, like stem, like if I have to stem the words, because like, um, but they have the aching versus ache, so hopefully I don't have to do anything smart. Uh, until my boy is like, and this is what you do all the time? Uh, no, uh, well, yeah. Um, so I do, I mean, I don't do things like this for my clients, but I do other things with data for my clients. This is just like things that I like to do for fun. Um, okay, so I think I got this. I think I know what I want to do. Um, okay. Thank you so much, Matt. But I don't think I could, I mean, I think I probably have eventually figured it out after like more struggles, but thank you for expediting that. Um, so let's see, this is a brand new directory, so let me get some things that I probably need. So I'm doing this with Node, so let me go and get um, some, let's see, I'm going to save this as a uh, um, let me call this sentiment JSON, I guess, like create sentiment JSON. Sure, 
create sentiment.js. So this one is for um, getting, um, so basically parsing, it froze on me. Um, Matt says, I read through a bunch of other folks' use of the NRC lexicon and they all recommended not stemming. That's really good to know. Um, since love versus loved is different, you know? Yes, um, that makes sense. And I'll go and read about it too. <laughs> um, okay, and let me make this bigger so that it's easier for you to see, hopefully. Okay, parsing and RC emotion lexicon. Text into JSON is what I'm hoping to do. So what I'm gonna do is also move that over. So I think all I want is take like this one down. I think I accidentally put that somewhere. Okay, so let me go and just let me save that. Oh my, um, oh, Andrew. Andrew says he got to run. Always good to see you. Welcome back to Twitch. Thank you so much for welcoming me back to Twitch. I will see you around hopefully every Sunday at 11 a.m. PST. That is my goal. I hope I can wake up early enough to get breakfast and have some tea before I get into this office. Um, but I will hopefully see you um, around very frequently again. Let's see, let me get this in here. Let me make this uh, a little bit easier. Motion lexicon text. And then, so what I want to be doing is first um, we get, and first um, load in, I wonder how big it is actually. So. If I could just 2.7 megabytes, should be fine. Load in um, synchronously, synchronously. Load in a uh, text file. My computer is freaking out right now, like super freaking out right now. I think I haven't, I haven't live streamed in a while, and my computer is like, "What are you making me do again?" And uh, it's like, the, I don't know if you can hear the fan burring. And. So, uh, let's just call it data, well no, let's just call it text. This is gonna come back as text. Um, and then read file sync. I'm gonna be really horrible at this because I don't use them that often. Um, and I'll probably forget a bunch of, uh, I'll probably have to look up documentation, but like sucon.txt. And then options is that it's encoding is UTF-8. I think they default to that now, but I put that in just in case. And then I'm going to console log the text and hopefully loading it synchronously because I'm lazy is okay. No sentiment. Yes. Okay. Okay, now that I have that text, I'm going to go through it line by line. I think maybe these are tabs. Oh, yeah, these are tabs. So I want to split my line. So that should just hopefully be a string that came back and I'm going to dot split by new line and hopefully that works and loop through it and let's see if that works console log nine and to make sure that I get it yes okay so now I've split it by line, and so now for each line, for each line, um, 
it seems like there is, it's in the format, the format is um, the word and then tab and then the emotion and then tab and then whether it's zero or one. So then I'm going to first create the JSON, actually I should call it, call it data, um, that I'm going to remember this in. And then I should be able to do, um, split that up to the word, the motion, and the score is equal to t dot split by, and I want to do it globally, so I probably need to do it as um, a regex probably. Um, would that work? Um, <laughs> Sharon advice says, how do you I feel like the last stream was months ago or a year ago? Um, it was months ago and I'm really, really sorry. Life has been a little bit busy. Um, but I did, I think I did have one back in June with RJ. And then I had one a little bit before that in April, I think. It's been a while. Um, but the, the last, uh, like, stream, like, a coach stream has been February. And I apologize, but at the same time, um, I, uh, it's, it's, it's been, it's been, a, it's been good to, uh, to take that break. Um, but I'm ready to come back. Um, <laughs> Serenify says, it's all good. I was just curious when I got the Twitch email. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. And, um, uh, ATD285 says, is file system built into Node? Yeah, I, I, it is. Sorry, I'm a beginner, but I'm a huge fan of your work, Shirley. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for checking out my work and checking out this live stream. But yeah, it is um, built into Node, so you can just like call it right away. Um, I haven't had, I haven't loaded any NPM packages just yet. Um, and so if I said, oh, you finished the sci-fi visualization. Okay. Um, still need to publish it though. Yes. Um, can you remind me again? I, I vaguely remember this conversation, but can you remind me again about the sci-fi visualization? Um, yeah, please remind me. I think I do vaguely remember this. I would love to see it. Okay, so let me um, make sure that that went through all right, where I split by the tabs. Yes, okay, perfect. That went through. Um, and so after that, it should be pretty straightforward. So essentially, I just say if there, the word is not in the JSON that we're building out, then add it. Um, and for each of them, add another, I think, uh, object. Um, and then, and actually, if, if we parse int the score and it is not a one, then don't do anything, don't add anything. Um, only add it in if it is, um, if it is, uh, if it is a one, words, sentences. <laughs> My brain is so slow right now. My eyes are like barely open. Um, but it is high time that I work on this uh, visualization again. It is high time that I uh, do the Twitch again. So even if I have to type with my eyes closed and only open it once in a while, I mean, I guess I guess my eyes are like small enough that you probably can't tell with these glasses. <laughs> um, okay, so data word is equal to oh, and then the reason why I want to do so for each of the words, um, I also want to remember what emotion it is. For each word, remember the emotion. So then if that word doesn't have the emotion yet, then, oh wait, no, 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 no. I think I can just do a, so no, 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 no. I can just do an array. 
So basically, um, I can just say push in that emotion um, to the, so the key would be the word and the value would be an array of the emotions because I think it's only zeros and ones. I think it, I've only seen zeros and ones. Um, I hope that is correct. And then I feel like, I feel like it should be as simple as that. And then it's probably going to be this huge JSON. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, oh, this is fun. Um, this is really cool, actually. I'm really excited. Uh, this is probably really small for everyone. So there we go. And I think instead of having to, so now I'm going to just put that into a file. So that should be a fs write file sync. Um, and then I'll just call it uh, emotion lexicon dot json json.stringify the data and I think I think it's by default, but let me still pass in the encoding as UTF eight. And Notion lexicon dot JSON, perfect. And then to just double check that it was done correctly, I'm just going to go through a JSON formatter. Yep, it looks correct. This is fun. Oh, this is so fun. Um. So Twisted Isles, thank you so much for following. Um, yeah, look at this. So there's okay. So, but I just I do want to make sure that um, it's only so this score part is only zero or one. So I'm going to say just in case. Um, let me let me uh, comment that part out just in case. Um, I want to console log. So let me just say if if the score is not equal to zero or not equal to one, then console log for me so that I can see it. And I don't think I have a console log anywhere else. So this should tell me if any of them are not zero or one. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, wait, wait. It's not, it's not zero and it's not one. Yes, and then console log it for me. What am I doing wrong? If the score is not zero and the score is not one, What am I doing wrong? Okay. I'm doing something wrong. I can't tell right now. Let me see what is the type of the score. The type of the score should be should be a string. Yeah, so if I say the score is not equal to zero string and the score is not equal to one and then console log me the score, shouldn't it? Why is it giving me back ones? I'm so confused, everyone. What am I what am I doing? Oh, no, that might be a good point. Let me trim. So with a Wanyan says, maybe you have a, maybe you have a white space with the one. Well, I guess, but if that was the case, then that would show up here. Hold on. Wait. Okay. So my brain is really fuzzy right now. Um, but that makes sense, right? Like if I want to see if there's a score that's not zero or one. So if score is not equal to zero, 
and it's not equal to 1, then console log it. What am I missing? Let me trim it just in case, because I think that's a good point. And you know what? Let me just parse in that too. I don't know why that would matter, but score.trim, I think should make that work. Parse in and score.trim. And then here, if it's... Oh, and of course, I've already taken away the zero part. So if the score is not equal to one, or in other words, holy crap. I don't know if anybody heard that, but that was really loud. Somebody like ran into something. Hmm, I hope they're okay. Or no, I think someone's like playing fetch with their dog outside. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, I think that was like a puppy that ran into the door or something. <laughs> Looks like a cute puppy. Anyways. So I can't do score.trim, really? Isn't it? So JavaScript string trim. Shouldn't that work? of undefined, there's undefined. And I go deeper and deeper into the spiral. If there is undefined console, so well that's gonna give me zeros too, I think. Oh no, I haven't parsed int yet, so hopefully it's okay. Oh wait, by undefined, I mean I want you to give me back the line itself. Why that's undefined? Where's the line? The line, oh, the line is a white space. Okay. So, is it just a white space? Is it just, what is that? Um, so maybe it's, Let's try that. Okay. Sure. Let's just do that. Let's indeed ignore any uh, empty lines. There are some nands, okay, that's fine. I think the nand is the last line. Oh, so the empty line is the last line, that makes sense. And then, let me only, only console log if, okay, yes, that took so long. I just wanted to confirm that it's only zeros and ones. Okay, but now, now, now we know, now we know for sure. Uh, but yes. Now, now we have the JSON. Uh, that took a while. Uh, so now we have that JSON. Yay. Okay, now using this, um, I'm going to go through her lines. So, let's call it parse lyrics. I'm not great at names. I'm not proud of this. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is, <laughs> um, go through each song and each line and for every word that's in the 
emotion lexicon, add a one to the emotions of that line. And hopefully that will make much more sense um, after I start doing this. But also, uh, I think I've been going for an hour, maybe? Uh, yes, I have. Um, and I need to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to take like a 10-minute bathroom break. Um, or maybe five. We'll see. A 10-minute, five to 10-minute bathroom break. And I will be back um, very, very soon. See you in a bit. Thank you for joining right now.
Hi, I'm back. Okay, so um, I'm excited for this. So now that I have a um, JSON of all of the emotions, what I'm going to do is go through the songs um, and then probably create a file, a JSON file for every song so that I can remember the, um, I think I want to remember the emotions for each word, each line, and each song. So that's my goal. Okay. Ooh. And let me go and create a file. I mean, a folder. So I'm going to call it songs. Very first thing I'm going to do is again um, use fs is equal to require fs. And then load in um, song lyrics. Oh no! <coughs> oh, excuse me! Oh, excuse me! Oh my god! Oh! Okay. And then get the lyrics synchronously, read file sync. Um, and that was in lyrics.json. Oh my gosh! Okay, oh, encoding is UTF-8, and then, um, actually, let the lyrics, because I need to then parse that into JSON, dot parse, the lyrics, console.log lyrics, um, and now it's node parse lyrics, us. Perfect. Oh, interesting. Oh no, so she has like the chorus and stuff. Oh no, it's not, this isn't all of this. Hmm, it's not all of the legs. Okay, but I guess it will do for now. She has the chorus. Let's see. Album, year, title. Doesn't give me the album. What a year. Huh. Okay, so let's go through each of them. Lyrics dot for each, and maybe I only remember the ones with albums. Um, yeah, I think so. I think I only want the ones with albums. For each of the lyrics, um, so each of them are songs, and if the song does not have an album, return. And for each song, what I want to do is, um, let's see, create a, I guess, no, I think what I want to do is, okay, so let's go through the lyrics. Okay, so let me do emotions for the song. Hmm. Actually, let me do it this way. Okay, so let's split the lyrics by line. So the song dot lyrics. Oh. Way long Walker, thank you so much for following. So let's split them song dot lyrics dot split by each new line. And so that's a line. And what I want to do, let me see, maybe 
oh, split by line, and then map. So first birds is equal to that. And then let's try and take a look at each of the lines. Nope. So lyrics dot for each isn't lyrics is I thought lyrics was an array. Okay, hold on. Let's take a look at that. Lyrics dot JSON. Oh, maybe it's an object instead of well, it's an array. Hmm. Yeah, it's an array. So why won't you let me do a for each? Let's not do that. Let me see. Let me cancel log the type of lyrics. Is it like that or is it the type of the lyric? Type of lyrics is an object. Why isn't it an array? What? Okay, you know what? If that is the case, why isn't it an array? Sure. If that's the case, I'm going to just load in Lodash. And then install Lodash. And then use Lodash to do this. And so I'm going to loop through each of the... Oh, 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 I know what I did. Okay, so that's that's what I needed to do. I'm... I pass in lyrics twice. Okay, let's try this. Damn it. Okay. Perfect, so let me console log each line now. Oh, thank you so much, Wheel of Walker. Um, so excited to see your workflow. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not disappointing. Um, okay, so any of the ones with empty lines. Um, let's see. So let me go through each word. Um, And then I want to trim out not only white space, but also anything that's not words. Those like commas and um, I want to be able to trim out like commas and the apostrophes. Can I do that with dot trim? Or do I need to do a regex? Maybe it's that I only do hmm. JavaScript trim. Uh, syntax. No. Okay, I'll try using regex then. Um because I also don't want like Hmm. So for each of these, I also don't want apostrophes or commas. So let's try this. Words is equal to line.match for each of the lines, match uh, only 
only letters and then give that back to me in a group and do that globally. And that worked. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. So this gave me back the words when I just regex match globally for um, just characters. And then I'm going to go through each of the words and um, remember the emotions for each of them. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Let me think this through. So, if there are no, if words is no, then return because we don't want to do something. And if there is, then go through array of words. And then for each, for each array, so for each word, remember the Each word, remember the emotion. So, words is equal to map the words from and then I just realized I haven't loaded in um, the uh, emotion lexicon. Past, oh, let emotion is equal to read file um, and then emotion lexicon.json encoding is utf-8. Inferno 116 says, what about apostrophes? Uh, uh, backslash W won't match them. Um, that's actually on purpose. So I didn't want to match apostrophes either. I wanted to get rid of commas. Um, uh, periods, apostrophes, etc. Because I only wanted the words. Um, so for example, in the we are, the word, um, that's okay because I'm not really interested in those words anyways. I'm more interested in like bored or tired or um, so I think that should be okay. Like even if the apostrophe kind of separated two things, I think I think only one one half of that is important anyways. That's my guess. Um, I think that's my hope. <laughs> Okay, so then emotion and then parse that too. And now that should give me back this. And so for each of the words, um, I want to see if there's any emotion. So what I'm gonna return is, you know what, I am going to use Lodash so that I can chain some of these operations and what I'm going to do is set words is equal to map no chain words dot map each of the words and then I'm going to filter out any of them that didn't match an emotion so I'm going to do uh, if Emotion, oh, let me call it emotions. So if emotions don't have the word in there, like maybe it's a we or um, maybe maybe it's like we or is or something like that that's a, that doesn't have um, emotions, return null and that way that will get filtered out here. But if there is, then return both the word and the emotions of the word, let's 
see what that gives us back. And so cool. So break. Oh, break is surprise. Sing, anticipation, joy, positive sadness, trust. Interesting. This is cool. Break, sing, leave, stranded, romantic. I'm excited. Okay, let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Inferno116. Says, cool, I don't really know what you're aiming at. Just wanted to tell you in case you forgot about it. Thank you so much for reminding about that. Um, I'm trying to just map all of Taylor Swift's lyrics to an emotion. Um, that's all I'm trying to do. So then what I'm going to do after that, I'll remember the emotions. And then what I want to do is um, figure out the, all the emotions for the line. So line emotions is equal to, um, and I think I'm going to reduce some by maybe. Uh, let me think about this. So for each of them, oh wait, no, hold on. Okay, so this is line, and then for each of the lines, um, so cons lyrics is equal to, let me chain this also. So I'm going to chain um, the song lyrics. And then, so I'll be mapping each of the lines. Actually, let me call it lines, because that I'll remember easier. And then I'm gonna, again, filter out any of them that were like empty lines or didn't have any emotions that came back maybe. Um, and then so here for each line, um, I'm going through the emotions for each of them. Um, and then what I want to do is return um, the line itself and the words in there and also the emotions which I can get as um, so these words, so the word emotions, okay, so, and then I can loop through all of the words, and I think first I want to get the I want to get the arrays of emotions back. I want to then flatten those arrays. And then I want to count by. Yes, so I believe what I want to do is, oh, actually, maybe I can do this. Count by for each of the words, um, word dot. Thank you so much for following. Okay, so then um, for each of the words, what I want to do is um, get the, no. So I do have to first get out each of the um, array of emotions from the words, emotions, flatten them. I think this is the easiest way to do it. It might not be the most efficient way, but that's okay because I'm not, Concerned about performance, flatten, count by, dot value. And that should give me back all of the lines for each song. And the number of Basically, a score of it was positive or joy or some of these didn't match at all. And some of these, oh, because the rooms are terrible and cruel, and then that match anger 
Discuss fear and negative sadness. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Okay, so I think um, I did that the way I wanted, where each line gives me back the line itself, the object of all of the words that have a corresponding emotion, and then the emotions for that line um, summed over all of the words. I think that gave me back what I wanted. And then, so for each song, what I want to do now is for each of the songs, so song is equal to, um, I want to get back the year, the album, and the lines and the emotions um, for those. So song is equal to the album, the year, I think it was on that year, yeah, so album, year, title is important, <laughs> and actually, I'll call it there, um, I'll call it words, and then what I can do is song, so I'm going to say object dot assign the original song object, and then I'm going to add back in the new lyrics um, with the emotions information, and I'm going to also add in um, an uh, an object now with all of the emotions. Um, with all of the emotions aggregated over the whole song. And so the way that I want to do that is for each of the lyrics, I want to get out, I think it should be the exact same thing, get out all of the emotions. Uh, the emotions um, objects, and then what I need to do is, oh no, um, it's going to be a bit more complicated than that. We get out all of the emotions, but now it's in a key value pair. So what I need to do is, I think, because it's now in a key value pair, hmm. Maybe I can do two pairs and that will turn it into an array. Um, wait, no, hold on. So I'll get back these objects and then I basically want to sum each of them. So what I want to do is Okay, dot, um, let me try dot reduce, and then um, for each of them, I'll get back an object of emotions with key being the emotion and value being the sum across the lines. And then to reduce, what I want to do is I'll get the object and I'll go through <clears throat> each of, okay, yes, there we go. I'll go through each of the emotions and then and for each of them, I'll get the uh, value and the emotion itself, and I will put that if that emotion doesn't yet exist in the object, I'll create that is equal to object emotion is equal to zero, and then I want to say object emotion plus equals the value, return the object, 
Oh wait, hold on. And then um, after going through each of the motions and adding in the values, we turn the object. I feel like this is there is an easier way to do this, but that should work. If I console log the song, I should have the perfect. So I have title New Romantics. Ooh, okay, so I have the emotions. Similar numbers of positive and negative. Um, seven in anticipation, seven in trust, eleven in joy. Oh, this is fun. Okay. And I'm going to save each of these songs. Uh, yeah, so Levita Breeze, Breeze, the Le Vita Breeze asks data pre-processing in JavaScript. Yes, I'm using Node to pre-process the data. Now I'm going to save for each one of the songs. I'm going to save them. So I'm going to save that in the songs directory, and then I'm going to save that with the song title. Um, and dot JSON, and that's going to be JSON that stringify the data, and then also give it an encoding of UTF-8, which should be the default, but just in case. And hopefully that works. Oops. Yeah. Did that work? Perfect. So for example, 22, let's see, those are the lyrics, and then the emotions, positive is 22, negative is 12, sadness is 10, interesting, positive, I wonder if I should even keep the positives and negatives because I think that doesn't actually quite sum up. Although it's so interesting that like, so like there's how many positive descriptors of emotions and how many of them are negative? So anticipation probably, that's probably neutral. Joy is positive, trust is positive. And then there's surprises also probably neutral. Um, and then in terms of something negative, there's sadness, anger, disgust, fear. There's like four more things to describe something, a negative emotion than there is for a positive emotion, which is interesting. Um, so actually, I think each of these are pretty small. So I think I'm just going to put them all into one. Wow, there's a lot of them. I didn't know she had these many songs. How many songs is that? She has 92 songs. Holy crap. Really? 92 songs, 737 kilobytes. Okay. I'm just going to put this into one uh, giant file for the sake of ease. Um, so then what I'm going to do is const songs is equal to lyrics.map. And then instead of writing it for each song, I'm going to see if I can just call songs.json songs and then see if I can get that into one uh, return object.assign, get that into one big file of songs. And let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm 
500 kilobytes, not bad. Oh, there's something that's no all the way at the end. Why is there no at the end? Double check my process data to see why there's no at the end. Oh, because I ignore some of them, I think. Yes, there are some of them that I ignore because they don't have an album. So let me take care of that because, yes, so if I don't have an album, I just ignore that. So let me filter those out. So chain the lyrics and dot map each of the songs. Wait, what's this closing? I see, okay, so then I want to filter out anything that doesn't have an album and then that should hopefully work. And then get all of the songs again and let's see. 91 songs, dang. There's so many of them. I didn't know that. Sounds of the season. Taylor Swift holiday collection. I didn't know that. Then emotions. This is fun. Mm. I feel like I should be normalizing this emotion somehow. Like, there's probably like, I feel like maybe I should be dividing it, them by like number of lines because if I'm going to be comparing them across each song, I feel like it's unfair to compare these numbers directly. Like if if there's a song with more lines, then there's probably, or like more words, then there's probably, then these numbers are going to be bigger. So I feel like I should be somehow taking that into account also. Hmm. Okay, I'll do that sometime later, but I'm glad I was able to get this data today. Um, thank you so much for helping me. And I think what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> yes, um, whoa, 1147, oh, I see. I need to ignore Dot hit ignore node modules. Node modules. That should help. And then I think I'm just going to delete all the individual songs. So I'm not going to use them. Okay. And then let me. Add each of these, I think. Hmm, get an RC emotion lexicon and apply to T Swift players. And add the dash. Oh, but I don't have a package chase on yet. But publish this branch anyways. And then what I want to do is put 
put that into observable notebook and just take a look really quickly. <clears throat> Taylor Swift Nerds Emotion Exploration. Ooh. Okay. And then let's take a look at my repo so that I can grab the data. All songs that JSON. I should go back in and give credit where credit is due. But let me do this for now. Let me grab all the data. Oh, actually, first let me require D3. And then let me go grab the data. It's a to d3.json, load it from that. Um, and then I now have all of the songs and I want to map the emotions somehow and I think maybe how I should be mapping it is as a line chart um yeah I think I want it to be a line chart um across the years across all of her songs um I'm just trying to okay so actually let me write down for each of them I have the lyrics um, and the, so blue, oh, but like this isn't accurate, right? Like he said the way my blue eyes shine and blue is now mapped to sadness, but blue here is just neutral. So it's not perfect. And I need to research into how to do this better. Um, <clears throat> but for now, let's take a look. Um, so this data set has, let me first list all parts of <laughs> Matt says, oh my god, I love this flow to observable book by using the raw git link for the JSON. Yes. Um, I yes, that is that is very convenient. I either if I have um if it's a project um, that I have a GitHub repo for, I usually do it this way. And if I don't, then I have a secret gist where I just dump all of my data and that's how I pour in data into Observable Notebook. But I've been actually, I've been like using Observable for the last, I think, month um, to do some things for like the, for ambassadors workshops and to do some things for clients. And I've really been loving it so far. And I've been kind of like establishing this process of like, getting it into observable, getting the data into observable, and then I'll list like all parts of the data, I'll list out like a few questions I might have. And then um and then I'll go through and use Vega Light. I've been using Vega Light, um, which has been really, really fun, which reminds me I should require Vega Light. I think this is how I require Vega Light, maybe? Mm -hmm. No. Hold on. Vega light with observable. Where is my mode Vega light? Uh, okay, I guess I'll just use that one. So Vega light, I've been okay. So that's apparently how I require Vega light. And then, so list all parts of the data. And so I have basically a song, and for each song, I have the album, I have the year, I have the title, I have the emotions, and those emotions are anticipated. Patient, joy, positive, trust, anger, disgust, surprise, negative. Um, let me make sure I have all of that. Okay, so anger, I should just do it as. Um, 
Levy, Levina Briss asks if I could inject insert CSS just like JavaScript in Observable. I actually don't know. I haven't looked into that yet. Um, I don't use Observables to create full-on visualizations. I just do. Thus far, I've only used it for Vega Lite, so I haven't had to bother with CSS. And if I do have to bother with CSS, I usually um. I usually just have it in a JavaScript block and I'll just assign it with D3. So I haven't had to, but I'm sure you could. I feel like this is somewhere in the tutorials. It's probably in there. Maybe in the introduction to HTML. So you can do HTML elements So they do it seems, they do styling it seems within a code block, a JavaScript code block. So it seems like it seems like they just do it in, in a code block. Introductions, code introduction to notebooks. Yeah, so I guess maybe no direct way to insert CSS. So there's anger, anticipation, disgust. Wow, there is really a lot of like more negative words than there are positive words in this lexicon data set. Is that normal? Negative, positive, sadness, surprise, and trust. And then for each of the lyrics, there are Lines, the line itself, the words that have matched the emotions for that line, and the words that have matched an emotion. Is how this data works. Hmm. For now, I think I'm only interested in this. So I think what I'm going to do is exploration, explore emotions at the song level. And I want to graph um, I want to understand how, hmm, maybe I want to understand, let's first, I want to, I think the first thing I'm uh, interested in is, I'm interested in seeing, I'm curious about, I'm curious about how emotions in her songs have changed over the years. So let's aggregate the emotions by album and then map that as a line chart, maybe? Yeah, aggregate the emotions by album and map that as a line chart map the, and then visualize and look at it as a line chart with the x being, x axis being the years, or being the album year, and the y axis is the, um, the count, the emotions count. I'm also interested, I'm also curious about 
and then I'll show into the bin each of them. But I think maybe I'm less curious about that. I want to see first a change over years. And I think after I do this line chart, I think I'm going to call it a day for the live stream because I think I've gone over two hours already. I think I'm far over the two hours. Yeah, okay, I'm a little bit over the two hours. <laughs> this Lincoln Park have a happy song. <laughs> I think it'd be fun if you take this and put it into Lincoln Park. I would definitely love to see that. So, um, so to do a line chart with Vega Light, um, I would need, uh, so I think I need to process the data a little bit more. Um, and so I would need Emotions by Album. And I think what I'm going to do is, oh, I guess I need Low Dash too. Low Dash is equal to the prior low dash. Um, and so I want to go through each of the songs. Goodbye. No, okay, so I need to change this. Um, I change the data, and then um, I want to first group each of them by the album title, yes, group by the d.album, I'm going to console log this to see that map, and so this is the songs and album, and then console.log the album and songs, so there's, no, there should be more than this. Oh, the latest one isn't in this data set. Dang it. I might have to go back and re-get this data set. Uh, wow, there's a lot of songs in each of these. Um, yeah, because her latest reputation album isn't in here. So, darn it. <sighs> These are the deluxe. I think these are the deluxe editions of her uh, her uh, albums because I haven't heard of some of these. Um, I haven't heard this girl at home. Hmm. Okay. I think also. So then, for each of these, but let me do this. Uh, for each of these, go through the emotions, and I think just. Yes, so go through each of the songs. Plus emotions is equal to go through each, no, yes. Reduce the song and then just give me back a new object to do this. Um, <laughs> Lavina Marie says, it's breaking the habit of candidate, or maybe not. I'm guessing that's a Linkin Park song. I actually don't know that many Linkin Park songs. Then, okay, so this is pretty much the same as what I did here, you know, here where I basically was like, just go through each of the emotions and then remember them in the object. But I actually think I want to remove positive, negative, because I don't know if that, I feel like that's a superset of the other emotions. Um, so if the emotion is equal to positive, or it's equal to negative, then return. And, and then for each of the albums, um, maybe I'll just call it albums. For each of the albums, I want to return the uh, album title, then also the year, and the year, 
the year is in a string, so I have to of uh, songs zero dot year and then emotions. And that should that reduce is not emotions is not defined. Oh yes, okay, so of course, because I just copy and pasted it over. So uh, for each of the songs, um, song dot emotions, it has to be song dot emotions. And and then, and then that should work. Perfect. Oh. Fascinating. I hope I did this correctly. Okay, see, I really, I think, I think I do need to normalize these because I think I need to normalize them by the number of words. Because if not, like some of these, I think some of these albums are just like purely longer, like has more words than um, others. So I think I do have to normalize them. Um, but for now, let me just map them in Vega Light. See, so in Vega Light, um, to use Vega Light in observables, I just need to say Vega Light and then open parens, pass in an object, and that object needs to have data. And I tell it the values is in album. And then I tell it because it's a line chart, I tell it the mark I want is aligned. And the um, Oh, actually, um, I think the way, crap. <sighs> How do I do this? I might have to enumerate this. Um, I want to color it by, darn it. How would I do this? So, I want one line per emotion. Let's look at Vega Light documentation. Um, and then let's say encoding and for encoding, I tell it that I want my x axis to be um, type is quantitative, and I want year to be. And then I want the field to be year. And then, wow, why is there, why is there a year that's zero? See, none of these are, why, why is there, hmm. Fascinating. And actually, let me sort this by the year. And then I need to take a look at how line charts are done. Okay. So, color. Field is symbol. What? Field is price. How does this, what does this data look like? So the thing that really bothers me, the one thing that really does bother me about like Vega Light is they'll give these examples and thus far I have not figured out an easy way to get to the data source. I've now figured out that I think it's in GitHub pages, I have to go to the data and then it's in here. So this one in particular is stocks.csv. And so this is, okay, so symbol. Oh, I see. So this is how, okay, so what I need to be doing is 
I'm having it as a flat. So an array of objects where I have to enumerate this. Okay. So I needed to be an array of objects where each object has the um, emotion, the year, and the uh, count for that year. So what I have to do is Hmm, so an array. Hmm, 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 hmm. So let me think about that. Hmm, mm hmm. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm just gonna like now just changing like crazy. Um, okay, for each of the albums, let's return map album dot emotions. Of course, emotion value. Well, actually, so it's supposed to be value. In the emotion, and then I'm going to return an object with the emotion, the value, and the album. Okay, so year is album dot year, and then the title is album dot album. I don't know why I have that value. Now. This should, this should now work. I hope so. I do hope so. Okay, so now I can tell it. Yes, yes, I think I, think I know now. Okay, so now I can tell it I want the Y to be also quantitative. And I want you to use the field um, emotion, no, the field value, and I want you to use for each of the colors. So it should be color, yes, for each of the color, I want you to use the field uh, emotion, which is a nominal. Cool. <sighs> Look at that. So, trust, joy. It seems like consistently the more positive ones are. There is, it seems like overall she has more of the positive emotions. I wonder what will happen if I make this into an area. Nope, never mind. I think I should sort it somehow, but oh well. Um so there is this is this pink lighting is trust, this green line is joy, then there's anticipation. Wow, she has a lot of anticipation. I guess she's like always anticipating for love. Um and there's fear, wow, her fear, well, okay, so this is not fair because this is not normalized across the albums. I need to go back in and normalize for like the number of words, word count. Um, so, there's, look at her, well, okay, that's, okay, I don't think I can draw any accurate conclusions from this until I normalize because I want to make statements that are like, Look at how much her like disgust has written risen, but like you know, the other things have risen there too. So, um, although it didn't used to be, I think relative to other things, uh, it hasn't been like it was. It, it started off pretty low, um, and then there's surprise. 
feel like maybe I should take out 2007. Hmm. But I guess this also shows you that the number of lyrics, 2010, which one's 2010? 2010 is Speak Now. Wow, she has, she indeed spoke a lot in 2010. <laughs> I love this. Larry <laughs> Tabriz is like, she's kind of positive. <laughs> um, okay, so I will come back with a normalized version of this, and then I think it will be really fun to see the trend of all of her different emotions. Um, thank you so much for a change to XY plot as opposed to line. Line is making it very confused. Um, I think I'm wondering if by XY plot you mean scatter plot. Um, I think it's not so, uh, line charts are pretty great for like time sort of things, and I wanted to see if there's any trends. Um, it is pretty confusing right now because of the number of emotions. But um, I think right now the most misleading thing is the fact that um, I haven't normalized these numbers across uh, the album. So some albums have a lot more words and some of them have less. So I need to do that and then I think I can more accurately look at it. Um, but I think it is good progress for today. Uh, I'm I might work on it a bit more offline, we'll see, but um, I like this progress and I think there's more things that I can look at um, within each of the songs and even just the words that she uses in each of the songs. Um, I think what would be interesting is like looking at even within each of the emotions, which, uh, which words come up the most for each of the emotions. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining today. Um, thank you for sticking it through for two and a half hours. I did not mean to do this, uh, but it was really fun. And I think I couldn't have figured this out so quickly if not for your help. So thank you so much for helping and sticking it around. And um, I'm excited to do this at 11 a.m. next week. And I hopefully will be able to wake up in time to do breakfast and then come over and then and then start at 11 a.m. I'm very bad as a morning person, but yeah, um, thank you so much. Bye. Have a great rest of the Sunday afternoon.